What is up, you guys? Welcome to the Nicotina Show's Midnight Run. We're live here on Saturday night. And technically, it still is Saturday night. I'm joined by Philip Barker, host of Superhero Stress. Ryan from Zeverfet, host of Zeverfet. <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan Rivera of Real Burn Productions. What's going on, you guys? How you doing? Hello. Good, good. So, guys, as we saw yesterday, right now we have only have one person viewing this, which is great. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Yes! I just have it pulled up. <laughs> so um, it will slowly populate. because he. No, I'm starting earlier today. So not, oh, there we go. Now we're up to eight. There we go. Okay, so guys, last night or yesterday was a big day for the Spider-Verse. And, and I talked about this last night with, uh, with TJ Bravo. But there was a lot of things that happened yesterday. I wanted to get your guys' takes on this. So yesterday we saw a – I think it was an Instagram post from Jamie Foxx. Yeah. And it was this one here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's he says on here, tell Spidey, let's run it back. Super excited to be a part of new Marvel Spider-Man new installment. Installment. Okay. Can't wait for y'all to check this one and won't be blue in this one. But a thousand percent badass. I mean, and, and then what happened was it got taken down. Because he may have jumped the gun, or, or, or I'm not sure what their plan with that was, or if that was just a mistake, but it got taken down. Now, Ryan, what do you make of this, uh, of the Instagram post that he put out there? Yeah, it's a, it's a marketing ploy to generate hype. Definitely. I think so. <laughs> Philip, what do you think? Why? <laughs> why yeah. i mean of, of all characters of any spider-man movies to bring back i mean it was cool to see jay jonah come back in far from home but like yeah Fox as electro like i think at the end of the second amazing spider-man he kind of like bites the dust doesn't he i didn't so i was asking that because i couldn't remember if he survived or not yeah Pretty sure he <laughs> I didn't, didn't remember uh yeah, the I, one I, that they I, should I could not remember i was like did he die is know. alfred molina because he's the best yes. villain that we've had so far. <laughs> hey, yes. hey, I'm going to say this right now. Alfred, Mol Alfred Molina is one of the most underrated actors in this in that in or in this industry. He is so good. I, I yeah, he I, was awesome in Raiders. <laughs> no, but oh, yeah, he everything Raiders. he's been in. I mean, everything that I see him in, he's he's an amazing actor and he's very yeah, versatile he's as well. But yeah. to, if they would have brought him back, that would have been incredible. <laughs> Yeah, and, and maybe they still will. Who knows? The pieces what? are there. Sam Is Raimi. Sam Raimi supposed to direct this installment? That's what I no. heard. He's doing. No, he's supposed to direct the multi the Doctor Strange. Thing, so, right? yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Yeah. right. And, and is yeah, that the, the, introducing the, mu the multiverse? Is that introducing like Andrew or Toby or or this whole setup? Maybe uh, it depends on when they get their release schedule in order. If they can get a release schedule out, you know, I mean, yeah. given the way things are right now. Right, 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 right. So, yeah, again, why Jamie Foxx? I mean, he has star power, <laughs> not as much as he did when he did Ray, but, uh, you know, he still has some star power. I, I'm, I'm thinking he's the only one that looks young enough to bring back. I would have thought um, that they could have done something with the Vulture again because Michael Keaton did an awesome job as the Vulture. He was the best part of, you know, Homecoming. But So if you're going to have him in The Flash – I would think, well, shit, might as well just have him in uh, in the Spider-Man as well. That way, star power is equal on both sides because he's still under contract with uh, with Marvel to come back and, and uh, for another appearance. So why not yeah, but, play that card? I mean, maybe he can't because maybe he's tied up because he's going to be doing the uh, the Flash movie. But I mean, who knows when they're going to be shooting those scenes these days? Yeah. You know, with Corona. Um, but I mean, it looks like they're trucking through it anyway. Cause I mean, look, Robert Pattinson, the lead actor, the Batman gets it and they still continue filming without him. So, which is great. Cause I thought they're going to shut the whole thing down, but they didn't. So that's awesome. Well, there's, there's uh, probably a lot of, you know, uh, scenes that don't involve Pattinson's character. And that's, you know, they were like, well, hell let's, let's just continue, you know, while, he, while we still got these people under contract. No, Ryan, I thought every do. scene was going to have Robert Pattinson. I'm just helping it. you out, buddy. We're seven. <laughs> it's fire. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and that's the thing too is that the new design because there, there was some art released by boss logic uh of electro 
don't know if you guys saw that or not. Uh, this one right here. It's Speedo. Oh, yeah, 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 where he's the reverse Flash. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> he's well, trying to modernize the face piece from the yeah, comics. Yeah, definitely. Oh, man. But that uh, looks a lot better, I think, than this. Not everything that Boss Logic, yeah, I know. Uh, not everything that Boss Logic does is legit. You know, sometimes no, it, he just it, does it, it for fun. It's not, but I'm just saying, like, it, to see a different concept of, of how – this character oh, yeah. could look. It, it makes you get a little more excited about it because I'm sorry, but this version I was never a fan of. Yeah, I, I liked I liked what they did w without the hoodie. I liked what they did with his body, where you could see, you know, inside or beneath his skin. Uh, I, th I thought that was clever and how they had the uh, the LEDs, you know, sort of lighting him up and things like that. I thought it was cool, but again, all that aside, he didn't really bring it as far as like his performance, his character. I didn't. I could give a crap about him and even before he became electro got got you know uh you know bit by the electric eels which i thought was also you know not that great um his his it's a really his funny nerd scene, character was like like ryan was saying uh just like jim carrey's edward nigma before he became the joker you know it you was just the very Riddler. yeah or, or, well he he could have been the joker that could have um, been alternate universe yeah yeah <laughs> well, Gavin's got a good suggestion about bringing back the lizard from the uh, first yeah. Game of Spider Man. That he was, was a good, good character. That was good. Although he kind of had that the Ninja Turtle type look with he had like no nose. It was like flat. Voldemort. Voldemort. Yeah, exactly. Voldemort yeah, he, <laughs> he had that Voldemort nose. Yeah. He I was thinking had a lot of stuff cut out of the uh, the first like Amazing Spider Man. There were a lot of like deleted scenes of his There's character buildup cut mm. from both films. Yeah. Like the ending from Spider Man Two, with uh, Peter Parker's father still being alive, right. and all of Mary Jane sequences cut. But she was, I think, yeah, the they did cut was, her out. Yeah, yeah, played by Shailene Woodley. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, her whole scene got cut out, and Wasn't they never she went on back the porch. <laughs> Wasn't yeah. that her whole scene? I thought she was like riding a bike, and she yeah, she was riding like a yeah, like a moped or you know one of those Vespas. <laughs> And uh, there was a whole scene that included her in it, but they decided to keep it out because they were going to uh, bring her in in Spider-Man 3, but then the whole series got rebooted, and then that was the end of that. Yeah. Is Shailene go Woodley going to make a return in this new movie? <laughs> They'll treat her like like the uh, the lady from uh, that played Iris West. <laughs> like, uh, remember when? Oh, here we're making it up for the fans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe kind of cool. You know, something we never saw could be brought back and we could finally see something new. Mm. And is, we is also... She... Go ahead. I was going to say, is she too old for, for uh, Tom Holland? Would he, uh, would he then have a cougar? A cougar! <laughs> Hey, good for him. It's a good taste, you know. I mean, something's got to fix it. that that Peter tingle. He yeah, doesn't that was look stupid. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> yeah, no, the Peter that tingle. Was, that that was stupid. Look, I I don't mind Tom Holland as Spider Man, but Mr. Stark. Yeah, he does get a little whiny, which oh, kind of bothered me. No, please, no, Mr. Stark. Why does he call him Mr. Stark? Like it's, it just it sounds <laughs> weird. It's like he's talking. To it a does. Picture. In a lot of ways, he's actually stronger than Tony Stark. Like uh, physically, so it's kind of like yeah, it's is. like, uh, dude, he should be like, hey, Tony, listen to me. Give me my damn suit. I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> like he could punch him and like wreck Tony Stark. In or out of the suit, really. We got yeah. Dawson from Nerdy Many Ways. What's up, fellas? Oh, he's Dawson. just here to make sure uh -huh. something happens. He's yeah. like, and yeah, guys, he's watching you. And guys, if you haven't done so yet, if you're a big fan of Raised by Wolves, check out the Raised by Wolves watch party hosted by Dawson Weedrich and uh, Adam, uh, Ambassadorial Wing. Uh, it's on his channel now. It's a great watch party of the finale of the show. There we go. They already okay. ended that? Yeah, it was, it was only oh, nine sure. episodes. That sounds like HBO. <laughs> I'm going to start watching it. Yeah, me too. I yeah, no, definitely. Lovecraft Country. That's great. That's a great show. God, it's amazing. Ryan, I like the boys. Seen it? <laughs> I haven't seen it. Uh, <laughs> I'm watching the boys. So uh, the boys, boys is good boys though. Things, yeah. Boys, it's it's bad. fun. It's it's very interesting. This this season is taking some weird turns in some places. It's pretty explosive, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, the last episode. Um, yeah, I wonder who's doing that. It's so weird. 
and certain people weren't worried that it was going to happen to what? them. But what? What'd you say? Andre, I haven't Andre. seen it yet. I haven't. Oh, seen you haven't it seen it? Oh, okay. Yeah, me neither. No, no spoilers. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm trying yeah. to. I'm trying to talk without giving spoilers away. Try harder. <laughs> yeah, try a. So lot anyway, harder. when Homelander came in and wrecked <laughs> all. <laughs> <laughs> When they all died at the end. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. There's no more seven. <laughs> yeah. Dark Side came through the boom tube and murdered everyone. So it stopped us. <laughs> Who likes superheroes? Oh, I, I stand corrected. Bat Batan is right. It was 10 episodes, not nine. Oh, I, I don't ten. know why I thought. Oh. Sorry, Batan. I, I was wrong. Um, now, <laughs> one of the questions that, that I brought up to, uh, to TJ last night was, do you think that you know, because both the MCU and the, and the DCEU have been talking about how they want to do the whole multiverse. Okay. Multipass. <laughs> multi I've, I've been meaning to get that one too. So, yeah, you do. So, there's, you know, we knew in the past that Marvel wanted to do this whole multiverse as well. So, do you think that DC knew that was coming? And so that's why they pushed it so hard to, to get that whole multiverse idea out there? Or do you think that? Marvel is reacting to DC's push on the multiverse, which is why they're pushing forward with uh, the Spider-Man uh, Spider-Verse. That's totally what it is. I think that's totally what it is. But they, they released into the Spider-Verse, which true. That's really right. opened up that sort of idea. I mean, they did it, you know, it's, it's easier to do it in animation than it is in live action. Cheaper too. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah it's cheaper, yeah. So I think that they, they, they put it out there before anybody else kind of came up with these two ideas. Uh, so, I mean, kudos to Sony, not to Disney. Uh, so, yeah. I, 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 and it was good. I like that movie. Yeah. I think, like one of the except for, except for the uh, uh, Doc Ock. She was subpar to Alfred Molina as well. Well, anyone could be subpar to Alfred yeah. Molina. <laughs> yeah. That's always Alfred good. Molina That's is a thoughts, great yeah. actor. No, he great is. Actor. Yeah. No, I mean it, it. It it always works where if the villain of the movie is is awesome, perfect performance. You know, they're 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 compelling. You know, their their stance. You know, or, or their their paradigm is 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 something that you can empathize with. Uh, they make the movie better because that forces the protagonist to meet that expectation on on how to thwart the uh, the villain. So. Mm -hmm. General Zod from you know Man of Steel, he made it better. That's a high uh, bar. Yeah, he set he set a high bar. Uh, you know, like I said, Alfred Molina set a high bar for for Tobey Maguire. Um, Heath Ledger's I mean, Joker. Even yeah, well, Heath Ledger's Joker was was good. I, I have a couple issues with with Heath Ledger's Joker. I love the dialogue. Oh yeah, uh, but the performance. I, I was I was sold it was something else and and it turns out I mean if you if you watch this this other guy this musician um, that's exactly where he he got every I know what you're talking about. yes yeah. his mannerisms yeah. everything I, his uh, his name escapes me right now it's something simple and I forgot um, <laughs> but so yeah no that, it was on the Dick Cavett show so I remember seeing that, that, video. that, that yes. his performance is now forever tainted in your mind because. It is because I saw where he got it from, but the way they marketed it, it was like, oh, he he was locked away in this room and he came up with this whole th concept and this thing or whatever. And yeah, I'm but, like, but Ryan, that's what they that said. It. Did he actually say that? No, he didn't. No, no, I no. Of course, remember. he didn't say it. That's true. Well, that's, that's true. true. So I don't I, fault I, Keith. I fault. I, I fault I everybody know. else it, for it sounds creating like a false are, narrative. It sounds like you're you're faulting Heath because I mean that's not that wasn't his call. He chose that that was the character that it was going to inspire. You know sure. his portrayal of, of the Joker, and I, sure. I don't see why that should have an effect on on how you perceive the character. I mean, he did an amazing well, no, job. Like I said, no, like I said, the dialogue was spot on. Oh, the, the dialogue, dialogue was, was yeah. fantastic, and that that's accredited to um, uh, Chris's Jonathan brother, Chris Jonathan. Yes. Yes. they mm -hmm. wrote yeah. the script and the screenplay. So yeah, mm. there's actually an interview with uh, Michael J. White who plays that uh, that mob boss, Gamble. Thing. Gamble. Yeah, Gamble. <laughs> And <laughs> there's an interview where he talks about uh, hanging out with Heath Ledger on the set of uh, Dark yeah, Knight. That's true. And he said, like, people talked about all these stories of how he descended into his deepest, darkest demons. But he was like, he would he would be skateboarding on the studio, yeah. he'd be talking normally with me. Like, he wasn't like the super meth. I'm sure he had some of it with him, but yeah, not like to that extreme. But yeah, that, that whole narrative, man. I was just like, what? 
Um, Tom Waits. That's the uh, that's the musician. His name was Tom Waits. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, I just looked that up. I mean, the cadence, the 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 mannerisms, the uh, the way he carries himself. I was like, I mean, all he did was just if he did a biopic of this of this musician, give him, you know, the Oscars. Give him all but, the Oscars because I, I mean, see, it was fantastic. I, I don't get where you're going with this though. I feel like you're using this as a way of saying that his his portrayal wasn't as good because now you know of this. <laughs> That this taints. No, it's not that his In portrayal wasn't wasn't as good. It was just it was, it, it was he was acting as someone else. He he didn't come up with his own like version of the character. But you know, okay. I, I mean, did, though, it was kind of different. Extent, though. I, I think so too. Now, if yeah. you saw this guy and let's say this movie had never come out, would you ever look at him and say, you know what, that would be a good way? That would be a good to, Joker. No, a good Joker. No, I exactly. never. If I saw the interview, yeah. I would have I been like, that's that's just some weird dude. Yeah. yeah, so weird musician. Again, so once again, just, this, is, this is bad take, Ryan. That's all. I, <laughs> <Get out of here. laughs> I just like the fact that each Joker How do I get you has their own show? take with everything. <laughs> I think going back to the original point of like the the back and forth between Marvel and DC, I think it's just always been inherent for them to just kind of look at each other and be like, "What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you yeah. doing? What are you doing?" Well, it's, <laughs> yeah. like, it's that competition. Yeah, it's that. Well, it's yeah, that. yeah, and, and that's a good thing because it yeah. forces them to try to strive to be a, or give a better product. They right. did the same thing with uh, with Pixar and DreamWorks. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got, you know, th- these uh what Bugs Life and and uh what was the other one? Ants. Fake uh, E. Fake E. Come on, Kevin oh, Fake E. All right. Kevin Fake E. <laughs> <laughs> That's not very nice. I hear some people pronouncing his name that way. I'm like, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. I don't know if they're yeah. humorous or <laughs> I'm sure they are. Serious. It's Feige, isn't it? I'm, I think so, but they say yeah. faggy. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I have. I don't know. No idea. I think everyone associated and Marvel or even every actor just calls him Kevin. They don't even like bother pronouncing his last name. Just go. Oh, Kevin's a great guy or whatever. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Kevin well, F. <laughs> yeah, Kevin F. <laughs> but then there's also what's his name? Uh, Paul Feig. The guy who yes, did the, uh, oh, the guy yeah. that did Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. like, I had an extended cut. That they uh, yeah, yeah, it had more down. And it's like, sorry, but we don't want to see that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's like, yeah, here's your answer to that one. Yeah, n- no, no, thank you. No, <laughs> it's like no. unless you had different actors portraying the roles, completely different story, everything. Don't even bother. <laughs> yeah. Hello, no. I mean, it's it's oh. not it's not worth it whatsoever. It's not. No. Um. So what are we talking about? We're talking about Kevin Feige. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, we veered off from the Spider Man. Yeah, the Spider Man. But here's the thing, though, is that that I agree that if they bring Doc Ock back, I mean, he died, obviously. But I mean, at this he, point, he, he could have swam. Did he? Because all he you did was you saw did him he? just kind of. I don't know. Those arms were look pretty heavy. I I mean, a those arms were heavy, and b he was messing with like you know science like portals and like, physics and like yeah he lived energy. because of science <laughs> science that's science. Mean, he, looked, he looked pretty dead <laughs> yeah it's your science, science. <laughs> Ryan, 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 spider verse <laughs> ryan's everywhere <laughs> there's so many ryan's this is well, the multiverse world. of ryan's yeah mm-hmm. in my verse uh jamie fox did a good job <laughs> <laughs> i thought but we just didn't see it I thought he did a good job as the villain, but like we were saying earlier, mm. as the professor or scientist, I thought he was corny. They he tried to make him a sympathetic fake. villain. Like, yeah, you're supposed and to it feel was, sorry for him or something. It, 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 crap. Even when he became Ven- it's really even hard. When he became Electro, he was corny. Like, he, yeah. he sounded like Mr. Freeze from uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mr. Freeze. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to light my candles as he's shooting electricity from his fingers. Like, it's just really dumb puns. Yeah, yeah. it's also really hard to like take a character like Electra, who's inherent who in the comics, is predominantly like either like a, a, a electrician or like a burglar. It's like how how do you make something like that relatable? Yeah. And know? the thing is, like the VFX for him was so interesting and so dynamic, especially when he's fighting Spider Man. Right. But as soon as he opens his mouth, it becomes immediately corny. <laughs> exactly. That's literally what it is. Like that finale where they fight in the electric in, in the electricity plant. It's yeah. actually really cool. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. Let's kick some ice. <laughs> Until that happens. <laughs> no, I would say Mr. Freeze is the ultimate. Uh, uh, Mr. Freeze is classic. classic. He is so, yeah, he's so corny that he, I, I love every 
pun. I mean, because <laughs> killed the dinosaurs. Yeah, he's a. <laughs> You can't one. not laugh that at that. That's that's the the dinosaurs. Yeah, I say. <laughs> that is indeed the best one. It is. Oh it's my god. Most classic. Oh, I remember watching as a kid, and I actually liked it because I think it reminded me of like the animated series. Hmm. And then, like when it finally came out on video cassette, yeah, uh, <laughs> video cassette. I remember oh, I watched it. and I was like, "This is terrible." It is. <laughs> I was like, what was I thinking? I'm still waiting for a better portrayal of Bane. We've had like three oh, God, yes. live action Banes, and only Tom Hardy is like slightly good, you know? The the best Bane is the animated. Yeah, the animated series as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, any animated version. Hell, the one that, that was in, uh, what was that one? Uh, Justice League Doom. That was a better Bane. Young Justice I'm talking yeah. about live action. They haven't perfected. Too. Yeah, well, no, we have not had a good yet. live action Bane. I'll give you that. I what was that Phil? Something. I said I just said Young Justice has a really great bane too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So guys, of all of since we're talking about multiple characters, like, like we are multiple banes, out of all the, the Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield, Tom McGuire, and Tom Holland, who is your favorite? Philip, let's start with you. Who was your favorite out of all three of those? Oh, that's a tough one. So that's a really, really <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's put him on, on full screen. It's, know, it's right? so tough. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, all three of them are pretty. <laughs> what's your, what's your answer? <laughs> all three of them are pretty great in their own right, but I think for me personally, it's probably probably Andrew, probably Andrew Garfield. I mean, he didn't get to finish his his story, but in just terms of overall portrayal, just as like Spider Man, he was perfect. Peter Parker, he was really punny. Toby, he was a great Peter Parker. Tom, on the other hand, Tom Holland has a really nice blend of both Peter Parker and Spider-Man. But I think ultimately my my personal favorite is probably Andrew Garfield. I do like Tom a lot, though. But like Andrew, I, I, I'm kind of hoping Andrew comes back now. I don't know. Anything's possible. We'll see. I mean, I think at this point now that they're, they're working on getting all three of them back. I mean, you have to at this point. If you're going to do this, this Spider-Verse, you have to have all three of them. You can't have one without the other. You can't just have... Tobe Maguire, and that's it. Here's you a fun can, idea. But you know, here's a fun idea. What if they take two villains who are still alive from each trill, you know, respective Spider-Man film franchise, two villains from each, and then there's your Sinister Six, and it takes three Spider-Men to fight them all. Ooh, like that'd that. be a good idea. Ryan, what do you think? Yeah, that'd be a great idea to bl to help blend it in. I mean, you get the Rhino from Andrew Garfield's no, Spider-Man. No! Rhino, go <laughs> Rhino! Paul Giamatti was alive. alive. Paul was Giamatti alive. was done dirty with that role. Yeah. I did not like that at all. He was the acting artist. like he was in the Sam Raimi films. <laughs> Bring back the so, lizard. The lizard, that'd be one. So Ernest says, to uh, um, Toby is my favorite Spider-Man. He's been a big part of my childhood. Yeah. Um, I think out of all three of them, I like Tobey Maguire. Um, I mean, that was the Spider-Man that I grew up with. So I think there's a bit of nostalgia attached to, uh, you know, his character. But um, yeah, I thought he played an excellent Peter Parker because he was extremely good at being awkward and making making his lines come out very uncomfortable, which would, which would hide his identity really well to, uh, from being Spider-Man. Um, so I, he's my favorite one. And then after that, you know... <sighs> Kind of like what Fatal J said earlier today. I thought Andrew Garfield was too cool. Yeah, he was. He was too cool. You know, and 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 you know, the scene where he's shooting webs at that at that guy who was trying to steal a car. I mm -hmm. I didn't. I thought it was a funny scene, but I didn't like that portrayal of the character because I didn't see Spider Man doing that. It's dickhead Spider Man. Yeah, he's like, oh, so yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 got you again. Oh my bad. Oh my god. Like, oh, wow, like, you did a really good portrayal. But, but what I'm saying is that <laughs> it, it just, to me, it didn't oh, fit. It didn't fit with with Peter Parker's character. I was just kind of like, what the hell is this? Now, obviously, look, he's he's putting his own take and his, his own spin on the character. Yeah, they're trying to be different. They're trying to be different, mm -hmm. and, and you know, uh, you know, obviously, yeah, I respect that. But I thought Tobey Maguire's Spider Man was more. Um, it was closer to uh, what we saw in, in the comics. Yeah. Hello, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Rhino, Rhino. You gotta get on board with that. <laughs> Let, let's, let's, uh, let's start, let's start that hashtag. Yeah. Rhino, Rhino Ryan. Is... Rhino Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> 
Craig says he likes Tom Holland because uh, he was a kid when he was casted and he felt like the suit was, and the suit was really cool. Um, but we'll Wait, get to that in a second. That for my I know, no, I, I know. We're going to go around the horn here. <laughs> yeah, come on now. I call that you forget. Oh, I mean, yes, we, we, we all the time, honestly. But <laughs> okay, yeah. so so Philip, you said Andrew Garfield. Uh, I do. Ryan Rivera, what is your favorite Spider-Man? For me personally, it's Toby because I think he balances both the characters very well. Andrew Garfield, I think he's a really good Spider-Man. I don't necessarily like his Peter Parker. I think yes, yes. I think his films have a lot more tragedy in them, which is more realistic. Since like Gwen Stacy dies, her father dies. It's it's a lot more realistic, kind of like how Man of Steel deals with it. It's like you're going to lose people along the way if you're a hero. Yeah, and I like that aspect and the drama of it. Holland, I've just never been a fan of it. Like, no disrespect to him as an actor. I think he's I think he's a good actor. It's just the way they write him. Like, it's fine for like in the beginning of Civil War if he's a little kiddish. It's okay. He's beginning a Spider Man. But when you're going more further down the line with the rest of the films, it just gets really repetitive and annoying. And the fact that he looks up to Tony so much as this father figure, like I understand it, but it just gets really repetitive and annoying, especially in Endgame. Like when he comes in the final battle, he's like, Mr. Stark, Mr. Stark, we won, we won, we won. It's like, dude, there's a battle going on. Stop being a kid for a minute and act serious. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? That, that scene, yeah, I remember when he did that, I didn't quite like it. Uh, however, there are parts of his character and, and there are a lot of scenes that I did like. Um, mm -hmm. I thought in the, which I think is probably one of the best battles of, of, of the whole Avengers series was the New York battle in uh, Infinity War. When, when they take on... Uh, wait, there was um, no uh, New York battle. Oh, was yeah, there? Oh, yeah, wait, yeah, the very yeah. beginning. Yeah. The very beginning, yeah. That, forgot, that, that battle I actually liked a lot. It was, it was really very, good. It was really dark too. Mm -hmm. And... Um, when Tony starts getting his ass kicked by, uh, I forgot the guy's name, Black and uh, Obsidian, I think. Cole yeah, Black Obsidian. Obsidian. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, and then Tom Holland shows up. Spider Man shows up, and and then he like stops the uh, his weapon. He's like, "What's up, man?" Like I remember when yeah. he popped out, I was like, "Oh shit!" You know, was, yeah. I like how they set that up. <laughs> but uh, that's, a, that's a really good Spider Man moment. I'll agree. That's that's a really good one. Because because that's I mean like that in itself is Spider Man you know I mean like hey what's up you know you're like oh shit yeah. and then uh, I also liked when when he caught and it's like one of my favorite Spider Man scenes in the MCU was when uh, was when the Winter Soldier went to go punch him at the airport mm -hmm. and he caught it and at the time like nobody did that yeah and for him to catch the the fist it was like oh shit. I just mm -hmm. showed you how strong he was. He was like, whoa, you have a metal arm? And he's That's moving awesome. it at the same yeah. time. So that is wow. awesome. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. I wasn't afraid of it. I thought that was really cool. I was like, wow. And that just shows you how strong he is. Because in the in the previous or the last time we saw him in uh, the Winter Soldier, uh, you know, he was a he was like a Terminator. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. he was like he a hard, yeah, unsolvable killer, you know? And mm -hmm. so I just thought that was pretty cool. That was one of the few scenes I liked in Civil War. Civil War is my least favorite Captain America movie, but that's not really a slight. <laughs> I like all three of them. Well, it, felt, it felt like a last minute because it, it turned into a uh, uh, an Iron Man movie versus a Captain America movie. And yeah, because Tony, uh, not Tony, oh God, synonymous, but uh, uh, RDJ, you know, lobbied for more screen time and uh and you know got paid for it as well so they they changed that all up and and uh, of course you know you had bvs coming out so there yeah. was there was that and mm -hmm. so they wanted an equivalent you know for their franchise so yeah they were yeah. definitely influenced by bvs i think Just a lot oh, of a lot of plot definitely. points were literally taken straight out of bvs yeah. well i think that captain america had a different name too it wasn't yeah, civil it war. Was it was uh, it was yeah, serpent society for serpent yeah. society, and it then they brought esque film. Yeah, and then they brought out Robert Downey, and then they announced the real title of it: Civil yeah. War. Yeah, <laughs> El Capitan says Civil War was a rom com. It did. <laughs> like some of those parts with Vision and Wanda, it literally felt like it came out of like the honeymooners. <laughs> You're pulling your punches. Wanda Vision looks awesome though. Yeah. <laughs> He's in a he's in a sweater. Like, does the paprika go in? Like, what? <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Um, Bat Dance says Civil War was such a terrible movie. I mean, I, I didn't think it was terrible. You thought it was terrible, yet you like the Spidey Tingle that makes or Peter yeah. Tingle that <laughs> Peter. I'm sorry, tingle? you lost all credibility with that one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, Ryan, you're the last Ryan left. Who is uh, your favorite Spider-Man? Peter Parker. 
the, who's your favorite actor? <laughs> oh, oh, Peter okay. Parker. Got you, got you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've got to go with uh, my man Toby. Uh, he he, it was a good blend. Um, Spider Man Three kind of killed the blend, and yeah. that's why they didn't go to Spider Man Four, even though they were planning on it. They're planning for it. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I have to agree with Ryan and and Nicotina, uh, with with Garfield. Uh, he he was good. But he was too cool. Like when he broke the uh, the basketball goal. Oh yeah, that, that was, was like that was that a little was way. Stupid. That was a little much. That yeah, was that, so dumb. I was like, yeah. oh. actually, my favorite scene in Amazing Spider-Man is when after Uncle Ben dies, and Flash Thompson confronts him, and Peter with all his rage throws him against a locker, thinking he's gonna mess with him, but he's actually coming in and saying like, I'm sorry about your loss. Yeah, that, I actually like that Thompson, one. You know? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I thought that was a really powerful scene. I, I'm not a fan of the Flash Thompson in uh, the new Spider-Man. Oh, him? Thompson. He like, like a cyber movie or something? He's yeah, shorter he's than Tom Holland. Like, <laughs> yeah. What? And he's like, hey, Flash. I'm like, I mean, I I, I just, I, I, I don't get that one. I don't. Uh, they that. should have called him Crash or something. I mean, you know, just, just, <laughs> he's a different character. He didn't have to be Flash. He could be somebody else. Just a yeah. douche. Call him douche. Um. Joe there Medinello was a, was there a was no, <laughs> there was no reason to change that character. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah Joe, Joe Manganiello was it? No, he was. Like, <laughs> he that's was. A, that's a Flash Thompson you want to be threatened by. Dude's like yeah, six hell, that's why he's Deathstroke. <laughs> yeah. So I think they avidly just chose to portray characters differently, just yeah. to be different from what had come before. Yeah. And like you and know, I don't like Zendaya. I think um, yeah. No, I'm it. not. I'm not down with her. They they called her a different name. And they said uh, they MJ. called her MJ Michelle. Her name is Michelle. Yeah. Called her Michelle. Then they backtracked on it, and then called her MJ at the end of the first movie. Then they ran yeah. with it in the second movie. It, it yes. felt like a cop out. Yeah, yeah they were like, "Whoops!" You know? like, and then Whoop. they were like, "You know what? Let's just put her in Dune." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you should put her in Dune. And I'm sure she'll roll with it. it. I mean, Denise I Denise hope Denise. she will because I'm not a fan. I haven't been a, a fan of her since Step Up. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just she saying, Denise Villeneuve uh, uh, he doesn't miss a step. Well, she was in Euphoria as well, but I never got a chance to watch that show. Me neither. My favorite oh, Spider-Man. Oh, Bad Dan, I agree with you then. My favorite Spider-Man is the 90s animated series version. I thought that was pretty good. I, That's a really good series. For Daniel yeah. Bryan, does a fantastic job voicing Spider-Man in that. He does. Yeah, he, he wasn't annoying. Like Now, if you watch the... Uh, oh, which one is it? There's a Spider-Man cartoon that's out now. It's... Um, uh, uh, they make well, a new one like every three years. I know, yeah. but there's one out there now where he's ex extremely cheesy in the cartoon. Um, Ultimate Spider-Man, mm -hmm. I think it's called. It's it, my my son watches it. It's like it's yeah. total, total cringe. You're like, oh my god. Uh, <laughs> Ernest, Ernest writes, "Do you guys want a Deathstroke?" So this is like way out of left field. But all right, a Death <laughs> Deathstroke mm -hmm. solo HBO Max series. Yeah, sure. Why not? Why not? No, exactly. we need the Batman. Is that, the, uh, is that the animated one that they're talking about? No animated. The new animation sucks. It did. I don't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But did you guys hear about uh, the Army of the Dead anime? They're going to try something yeah. on the line of the Christian Injustice Slater, cinematic. Joe Manganiello, uh, yeah. are going to Harry Lennox, up. Vanessa yeah, Hudgens. Harry, yes, he's going to be alone. It. It's like yeah. a Zack Snyder uh, family reunion. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I, I think, isn't Jay Oliva doing the animation? He's yep, directing, Jason. He's directing yes. it as well. Indeed. Yeah, so, so it, it should be good. And they want to make it on par with like the uh, like the Injustice cinematics kind of CGI. Oh. So like wow. it's gonna be. Okay. So if they could do that, imagine what they could do with Deathstroke with Batflick if they want with Green Lantern. Like they could do so much with animation. And the thing is, those guys who made those like Injustice or cinematic trailers, like from the Arkhamverse, they were a lot of them were actually inspired by Snyder and the way he films. Mm. I think Tim Miller did the Arkham Origins one where Batman he did. fights Deathstroke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Tim Miller also did the uh, Deadpool movie, uh, the first one. Well, yeah, yeah no, he and he did that, but I'm saying he did the uh, the trailer the, for the only Deadpool movie um, I've ever seen for uh, <laughs> uh, DC, for DC Universe uh, or yeah. um, DC Online or whatever DC Universe Online. You know the trailer where you uh, know, hell uh, yeah. It's yeah. like the best cinematic trailer ever. Yeah, that, that was really good. Yeah, that was but, directed but, by my man uh, Jens Anderson. Was it? I thought it was directed by Tim Miller. Not that. That was. Uh, I mean, they outsourced it. You're talking about the Sony game. Yeah, the one where it shows like. Yeah, he was. Batman, he was the creative Superman. director. And that, yeah, that was involved though with that cinematic. Yeah, he was trailer. involved with that. That was. I, I know he was. 
Right, right, right. Well, I mean, but but he was uh what I was saying is he's over the he was over the whole project at oh, that time. Okay. He was over it until uh they changed the the guard to what was that uh, what's the name of the uh, studio now that has it uh break some, something daybreak daybreak studios has it okay. now so yeah now it's a subpar game now i didn't get a chance to watch this movie the anime oh, movie tomorrow I've seen yeah it. Was i did good? see it did you like it you know mm. i did i i enjoyed it for the most i didn't like Parasite. There were a couple things where I was like, it, "Yeah, Parasite was <laughs> Godzilla." <quick>. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the purple like, Godzilla. What? <laughs> that was like, all right, that, that's new. I, I dug. They, they did I dug Lobo. Did. I thought he was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, Martian Manhunter <laughs> kind of came in and left, and then came back. I was like, "What?" Yeah, yeah. Like setup. Yeah, yeah. I was like, Ish, uh, "Yeah, I didn't of. help you because you know it's in the script." Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, feel like, I, feel like, I feel like this movie might be maybe like a launching pad for another smaller. I think that's universe. definitely what it is. But, yeah. You know, I, I, I mean, the, the only thing that, that, and I heard it was a reference to another movie and I, I'm not sure, but that damn cinnamon talk uh, when they're well, talking okay, about so the coffee. What, what was that about with really the coffee? Just, it was just like cringe. It was like, shut the hell up about the coffee. Just fucking give them coffee. Wait, and then move on about? with your day. Uh, when when Clark was like, oh, "Yeah, I put some cinnamon in your coffee. It really wakes it up." I'm like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like, like, and he said it three times in the movie. Really? Oh god! Yes. I didn't even pay. He attention. said it to the janitor. Uh, he said it to somebody from the Daily Planet, and he I forgot who the third person. But yeah, he he said it three times. I was like, "Come on, can you quit with that line?" But yeah. it, it's a line from I think The Office or from something else. But oh, but okay. they. They brought it in, but I mean, if you're going to say that, you use it once and be done. Uh, mm-hmm. But they said it three times. I was like, "Come on, dude! Don't don't make Clark come out like that." So, so Martian Manhunter was a standout from the film. A standout? That's what El Capo de Siam says. I'd probably say Lex Luthor was a standout for me personally. Hmm. Voiced by Zachary Quinto. Yeah, Lex Lex was good. I like Lex. I liked. Uh, I mean, my, my biggest thing was again Parasite. Another thing that 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 uh, sort of is weird about it is that like you know, okay, so Lobo came in for a bounty, didn't didn't complete his bounty, didn't take anybody in, and that was kind of it. No, it was he's like, Lobo. He doesn't really. Give much <laughs> he doesn't shit. really get his bounties. <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of shows up and leaves. Yeah, he's like, hey, the main man's here. All right, see you later. <laughs> That's a bad reputation for a bounty hunter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know. Yeah. He's, he's, really he's got this great <laughs> reputation across like a the phenomenal galaxy. reputation. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the man oh, don't Santa worry about him. He just let you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not gonna work out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think Snyder would have done if he had Lobo? Oh God. Oh, oh man. He would have cast think... Jason Momo as well. <laughs> that would be awesome. I, I I mean, I would love to see that. That'd be or great. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I could see him rocking Lobo. Or you know who I remember this was thrown out as a rumor, Michael Bay directing a Lobo esque film. Because he could do whatever he wants because he goes balls to the wall with everything. Michael Bay, you, the only thing you would it. get is explosions. But explosions, <laughs> there were probably there were probably there would probably be a lot of He's like, I want to see explosions and and ladies hanging over motorcycles so we can see their booties. A lot of Uh, (laughs) support. Like, it'll be like, it'll be the logo. to show up. And and Logo can only talk through his motorcycle. (laughs) It'll be the Logo film that that Logo would want to see. It's fire. (laughs) <laughs> you think about the kind of personality that Lobo is, and then you think about the kind of director Michael Bay is. It's like, well, shit, there's a yeah. cash cow right there. Why yeah. do I think it's, <laughs> no, it's literally perfect? It's perfect. It's, it's, it's a match <laughs> made in heaven. And they still haven't greenlit it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and then they also hired the animation team from Archer to to do that movie, right? Man, Which the movie? man tomorrow. <laughs> the oh, Superman they, yeah, yeah. oh, they did. Oh, wow. Very so that, that explains a lot. That explains where there was a lot of heavy black. <laughs> I was, lines. I was joking about that, but they look exactly like Archer. They do the animation yeah. style. I was like, dude, this, uh, what the hell? Yeah, going on? I, I prefer the Apocalypse War animation that series. Oh yeah, I, I like it a lot better. <laughs> Michael Bay would explode Lobo in five <laughs> seconds. <laughs> hey, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder I'm how sorry, that would be one of the, the that'd be one of the biggest guilty pleasure films that we would have. 
<laughs> it would it would be on par with like you know the first deadpool movie you know just I'd, it would be that great yeah i think we'd we'd love it it'd be something it'd be something that uh that you could watch and enjoy over and over again it's fire that was for <laughs> anthony right there so going back to spider-man you guys so we talked about our favorite spider-man and everyone in the chat uh, go ahead and put down your favorite out of all the three Spider-Man that we've seen, Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, and Tom Holland. Now, if you had to have one of the villains come back from all of the uh, from all three series, who would you did choose? Did we already cover this one? Well, we, we kind of <laughs> did. We kind of did. Well, you know, my I would, actually, I would actually want Sandman from Spider-Man 3, if he could return, if he's oh, God. not yeah, he was too good. old yet. What's up, AK? I think that'd be a really good, really good character to bring back because he was he was actually like one of the best parts of Spider Man Three. Thomas Hayden oh. Church, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was great in Wings. Yeah, Wings. that's about it. <laughs> I, I, I did not mold? like his character in Spider Man Three because when, once again he became a character that like you're supposed to care about, and and for that for that matter he actually kind of became like an afterthought. Like when he was dealing with 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 uh, Sandman after a while, I was like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot he's here. Oh yeah, let's deal with him now. Yeah, they 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 shifted focus to Venom. Yeah. yeah. When I thought, I just thought the Sandman stuff was a lot more interesting. It's oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it I was. Mean, it was. By the way, there can you go, guys Andrew. Hear me properly hey, on my mic? Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure no technical difficulties. In hey, case it's Toby Garfield and Holland, Batman loves Tom Holland. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Andrew uh, agrees with me. We both feel the same about Tobey Maguire. Toby mm -hmm. for life. Uh, and Gavin likes the lizard. All right. All right. That was a good. That was a really good Spider-Man. Lizard would have been cool. Yeah, lizard. Been cool. <clears throat> yeah, lizard was lizard good. Was fun. Yeah. What's up, K Katsuka? He says my favorite would be Toby uh, making a Sinister Six team with all the villains from all the movies. Yeah, I, I like the idea. Yeah. Uh, I think Philip said that. Right? Was that mm -hmm. Philip who said that? To take, to take two from each one and then they become your Sinister Six. I think that's, yeah, that's awesome. Really cool. But which two would you take from the MCU Spider-Man? There's only oh. two, right? Yeah, there well, hasn't been. No, <clears throat> no, no. There's there a was the Lizard. There was Mysterio. There was... Uh, the uh, Lizard? The Vulture. No, there wasn't the Lizard. Uh, the Vulture. Yeah. Mysterio. Yeah. Who else was there? Tinker, Shocker, and Prowler. Yeah, but Shocker's dead, isn't he? No, 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 no. They have a new shocker. No, oh, yeah. 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 Shocker one got disintegrated. Shocker one. <laughs> <laughs> Only Michael Keaton's vulture is going on the list. The rest of them. Yeah. Like I wasn't yeah, a big fan yeah, of yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio. They like, it just didn't feel like the character nor he was really that yeah. into it. You know? I think, I think you're right on that. Cause they, there was, there's this clip of him and Tom Holland on the press junket. And he just, uh, they ask him a question and Tom Holland said something. He was like, yeah, his answer. <laughs> Cause he didn't yeah. care. He, he, didn't care. Like a, he was like, like I finally, on. yeah, he was yeah, like, he, uh, I really wanted to be Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wanted to be Spider-Man and I wanted to be Batman. So I guess this is the mm -hmm. best I'm going to get. Do you actually know who, they, who Sam Raimi wanted to cast as Mysterio? I think like the fourth Spider Man oh, film. Bruce Campbell. Yeah, uh, Bruce Campbell. Mm -hmm. Wow. He was, he was at, it was actually going to be like an opening scene. There's a storyboard of him taking him into jail and he's like overweight in this globe and it's, it looks really funny and it's like Bruce Campbell's drawn face as he's going into jail. And that would have been cool though, I think. Yeah. Wasn't the rumor like antagonist, the vulture too? Supposed yeah. To be by the vulture, it was, yeah. Uh, ben he was the one that was supposed to be in part four. Yeah. yeah. Along it was with either Ben Ray. McKinsley or. Um, What's his other name? John I, th Malkovich, I think right John Malkovich. Yep. Yeah. Yes, I, I heard about John Malkovich. I heard about that one. I heard about Ben Kingsley. Yeah. It, it was <laughs> <those two. laughs> What's up, Jesse? <laughs> uh, I didn't care for, for Far From Home at all. Loved Keaton as Vulture. Yeah. I mean, I thought Keaton yeah. did a great job. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's the best part of who likes the MCU. And then the Shocker <laughs> got 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 disintegrated. And, and that he was played by the, I forgot the guy's name. He's like the poor man's version of Tom Hardy, Logan Marshall Green. Yeah, I thought it was Tom oh, you're Hardy. About that guy from Upgrade. Oh, is yeah. that him? That's him. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's that's he's, a great he's movie. The low grade version of Tom Hardy. <laughs> yeah, he's he's the poor man's version of Tom <laughs> Hardy. Like, that's funny because couldn't get Tom Hardy when I got him. 
And then Venom came out. And I was like, well, which one do you want to watch? Because they're yeah. almost the same movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of like Bloodfather and, and Logan, right? Yeah. That's right. Well, I'm uh, I'm like almost chosen for uh, Rick Flagg's role in Suicide Squad. Uh, he was no, David no, Hasselhoff? He was casted. He was no, cast. no, no. That, was, uh, that, was, that wasn't his. That was uh, <laughs> Sam Jackson's character, Nick Fury. That was... Uh, <laughs> that was gonna be David no, Hasselhoff, but, but but Tom Hardy he was cast <laughs> as uh, Rick Flag, and, and then he yeah. backed out of it because he said that oh. uh, his because all of his lines you could understand. Yeah, he said that his role <laughs> wasn't strong like, enough or whatever. No, I think it was <laughs> scheduling conflicts or something. Is that what it was? Yeah. yeah. So Andrew says Nicotina uh, from the MCU, Vulture and Mysterio, right? Garfield, Lizard. Uh, Raimi, Green Goblin, and Doc Ock, and Tom Hardy's Venom. But can we say that that Venom is in the MCU? Uh, yeah, he is. I believe. I, I, I want to say I that think he that's is. what the lady from Sony was 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 kind of getting at was that they they want everything to connect uh, or intertwine with you know the parent company, which is you know uh, Marvel owned by Disney. Well, uh, Jesse, if that's true, uh, I don't know what the news is. Um, but uh, Matt, if you're listening, you can always jump on here or, and let me know, and I'll, I'll you can let us know what that news is when you uh, are able to. <laughs> Do you guys actually want to see the air cut? I do. I, I would. I do too. I would. Very interested. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no, it's definitely something I'm, I'm going to watch. Oh, definitely. I don't see why. I mean, it, it, there's so much connection to uh, Justice League that yeah. I think you have to have you have to release that eventually. Yeah, just that concept art alone of the parademons, like it just looks so otherworldly and bizarre. Yeah. Like it just it felt like also Jared Leto's Joker as well. I mean, yeah. I'd love to see more of him because I think the portrayal is so unique, but it's pretty underrated because it's so little of him that we see. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I want to see is a better is the better version of the third act. You know, I want to oh, see yeah. the final oh, confrontation. Yeah. I want to the see the third act. It sounds a lot cooler, especially. With yeah, I want to see Steppenwolf possessed. interacting with Joker if and, they have and that. Enchantress. Maybe. Oh no, they do. They do. They they do have that. Okay. They uh the the same company that they uh, that they're using the visual effects company that's working on Zack Snyder's Justice League for Steppenwolf is also completing the uh, the visual effects for Steppenwolf for the air. <laughs> Is that uh, Zoic Studios? <laughs> Zoic? <laughs> Zoic? But I thought they scrapped the, the Parademon concept early on. They um, scrapped a lot of that uh, of that story arc, but they mm-hmm. they did have uh, they did have a an outline or a layout for that whole uh, interaction with Joker uh, becoming the prince prince of the king Gotham? of Gotham king of Gotham yeah. Um, yeah. So they they did shoot that and they they did reshoots to to give you the uh, the game video game ending uh, that you got. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I just I wanted to get a better ending. team dynamic too. I felt like there was a lot of good stuff they could have done, especially like Killer Croc. Like he was completely neutered in the film. Oh yeah, yeah. No, he had a lot of scenes of of like his whole thing was like if whenever he eats somebody, he takes their essence or some shit, you know, where he like. That's why he tells Harley, you know, he he doesn't he ain't gonna eat her because she smells of crazy. Yeah. So he he eats people that he feels like you know would he would benefit from. You know, he would be able to gain some form of you know attribute that they have by drinking their blood and, and eating their body and all that. So, That's interesting. Yeah, it's just there, there's a lot that, that that got left on the cutting room floor. I especially too want to see like um. Something that David Ayer talked about was uh, the Joker, after Harley left him or was imprisoned, he, I think it was this like VFX shot of that shot where he's like in the circle of all the weapons and everything. Mm-hmm. And in the background on the couch, there's like a drugged out girl. Yes. And, the and they painted Ayer, her out. Yeah. The concept was that Ayer talked about the fact that Harley isn't in his life anymore. He constantly finds women to replace her. And when he's unsatisfied with them, he kills them and finds a new one. It's like yeah. that is so twisted and demented, and it's perfect for the Joker. It's like, why would you? It's too scary, I guess, for WB. Yeah, it's too morbid. Yeah, I've I would been agree. thinking about that and why those kind of decisions would be made, and then it kind of occurred to me of who was like head of DC Films at the time. I was like, oh, okay, that makes a whole lot of sense. Well, yeah. even even for the Joker movie, uh, when um, uh, the director was going in and pitching the film. 
they, his response or one of the responses they got was that we sell uh, Joker pajamas in Target. Yep. Right. So, yeah, we don't really, you know, we don't see this this character being as, you know, because, I mean, that that's where you get all your money. It's not from the films. I mean, they get money from the films, but they get money from the merchandise. Yeah. Exactly. You know, that's yeah. that's what's up. George Lucas set the standard on that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, what's cooler than having a Joaquin Phoenix Joker shirt? I mean, oh, I was thinking that's... underwear, or even like a, a <laughs> big, <laughs> underwear. I like that. A post okay. boxer okay. briefs. Yeah. Oh, so, of course, it has to be. It has to be uh, <laughs> briefs. It's, it's got to be like the Walter White uh, tidy whities <laughs> I gotta have my. I gotta have my that. Joker snug in my junk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so TMI, here TMI. Had, yeah, no. here's here's the thread from uh, from Lightcast. When he, when he talked about uh, the air cut, um, Ryan from Zero Fat, you want to go ahead and read this because you're such a good narrator. Oh, thank you. So, to clear confusion, but uh, you, have, you have to sound like Matt. Oh, <clears throat> uh, no, I can't really. I can't really do that. Okay, guys. Uh, so, anyway, so I, don't know, I was just talking over, uh, we were going out to, for dinner and I was just drinking some water and it was just kind of, I don't know. What? What's that? Okay, so I just gotta move my mic around. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I, I got, got my saying. dog. I got my dog yeah, right okay, here. Here we go. Yeah, you got a pose like this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With um, your arms on the table. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, really, I really like that. He's like this. He's like, "Hey, what's up, guys?" Is he's like, "Hey, hey, what's up, guys?" So. Yeah. We're talking about shaving our balls, and uh, you know, uh, yeah. go over to Manscape. Use promo code put, save twenty percent off your first order. Uh, it's a great tool. I use it every day. <laughs> yeah, you shave your balls every day. Yeah, every day, <laughs> no they stubble. Must be red, uh, but that's yeah. that's that's not TMI. Um, it is- it's fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is fire from the chafing. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead, go read it. Uh, okay, uh, parademons did not just appear on Earth; they were invented here. Uh, right, exactly. Star Wars does not just <laughs> appear and is granted access to Earth because the mother box was awakened. Parademons come wolf, first. Star Wars <laughs> and they activated the boxes. Remember, Cyborg is a is a super comp. Of apocalypse one. Oh wait, hold on. Let me go over to that. And do do do. Can you see that? Yeah. So parademons mm-hmm. would actually be hunting the mother boxes and searching from uh, searching the earth for them at the same time they are being led by cyborg, which again is a different or a direct connection with a mother box uh, because he was born by it. Uh, we see this as the first. Oh, we see this in the first Zach JL uh, trailer next to Superman sacrifices himself in BVS. Uh, his scream is a signal sent out or sent throughout the universe. Uh, Star Wars hears it and communicates through the Kryptonian ship to Lex about the mother boxes and how they will work. Uh, this is also a nod that Kryptonian tech and apoc- Apocalyptian tech are similar. Wink three. Okay. Oh, oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It, right. it, was, it, it was a big one. So I'm trying to fit him in there. So, yeah. Uh, so sorry. Much, sorry. <laughs> Star Wars would not need it's not to communicate. Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> well, then don't put Star Wars. Uh, not uh, Would not need to communicate with Lex about mother boxes if he could just pop in right after Superman's death. The boxes needed to be activated. Uh, they are they are now awoke. <laughs> Zach is is moving. That is distracting me. Uh, they are now <laughs> awake, and like Lex said, he's he's making hand gestures. Uh, they heard it among the stars. By why I am. Uh, but oh, why am God. I telling you all this for? Let me see. Damn, how many fucking things did he put? I, uh, I the reason. Oh my god! He's going. Of course, Joker jumped in here. Oh, look at me! Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't want to hear I, Ryan talk that much. I want to hear me talk. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, take it away, Ryan. No, you keep going. <laughs> uh, the reason Actually, why, okay, reason oh, why oh, is oh, because oh, what followed oh. after BVS hashtag Suicide Squad. 
Uh, this film is a direct sequel to Set Up Zigzigl, uh, which is just a plan, right? Well, Enchantress was building a magical boom tube <laughs> to bring Star Wars here. However, the squad stopped her and interfered, but five. Say, look at that concept art. There. I mean, look at that. It's oh, tremendous. yeah, that, that, that looks that beautiful. Looks look so at that. much better. My That's God. actually how I would think the boom tube would open for when Dark Side comes through. But, like, exactly. a lot bigger, you know? Yeah, pretty, yeah, yeah. I mean, big. I, could, I, I mean, see that. Yeah. But but look how the the mother boxes look. Yeah, and it, it looks more mechanical mixed with magic. And that's what they're it's really supposed big to be. too. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh if we go back, you have one more. Yeah, they don't seem so portable. Yeah, yeah, right there. So who's that? Yeah. I think yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's actually uh, early that's concept Star Wars. Art for, uh, no, I think it's early concept art of Incubus. It just doesn't yeah, look like Steppenwolf it's, whatsoever. Yeah, it's Incubus. That's definitely Incubus. I remember uh, when I had Joker on here, he was saying that's Incubus. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Now, I want to see this movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, we, hey, wait, 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 wait. Go back, go back, go back. Look at the uh, above. Look at the skull. The eyes. Right above the head. It looks like like Brainiac almost, but I mean I know it's not. But oh, I, mean, I see what you mean. Yeah, 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 that looks like like an alien head. He mm. has arrived. It says. <laughs> no, he. Uh, oh, mm. I don't he know who this. Right. I don't know. He. Yeah. He. Look at all the people around there too that they have like held hostage. Yeah. Yeah. And did you guys see that other concept art of uh, the other parody ones where they were like morphed with human beings and they yeah. were like like four arms or like it was like a, a man, a woman and a child, like morph into one shooting. Oh, wow. Just really creepy, like morbid kind of designs. Yeah. There's Batman in the, uh, yeah. Uh, in the parademon cocoon. I can't mm -hmm. wait to see this scene. This is, it's going to be, one of, it's gonna be one of the best Batman scenes in the film. Probably one. I of, love art. this concept art. <laughs> and he's like, are you getting this Alfred? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Alfred. This was horrible. This was so bad. Alfred at Wayne Manor. Yeah. Yeah. Every parademon, if I if I do this to them, the they three boxes will appear yeah. behind him. If you notice the lighting too, it's it's bright as shit for Gotham City for it to be yeah, nighttime. It's like, holy crap, yeah. man. These like, lights are bright. The, ci that the city is bright, but it's not that bright. <laughs> He's like, that, that's Wayne Tower in the background. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me everything you know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? Do you speak English? Yeah. And the parody one of you don't like falafel. <laughs> When the paradigm blows up, it magically has the three mother box symbols on it. Yeah, I know. That's mm -hmm. so stupid. <laughs> I was yeah. like, what? And I'm the like, bad, the bad I would, guy. I would just be curious. I'd Batman. be killing parademons all the time. Like, oh, it does. Yeah, yeah. Every every parademon. Three there boxes. he is. Crazy. There he is. Joker's here. I, I wrote my stuff eight months ago. Give me some credit. <laughs> I am giving you credit. I brought up your name, didn't oh, I? Oh, man. Yeah, I know. That, that's enough clout. <laughs> that's enough clout, you clout chaser, Joker. The thing that I'm really interested in everyone is then. what the uh, promo code footsies. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm really interested in is the time span of when Superman's death occurred, and Zack Snyder's Justice League. Is it like a couple months, a couple weeks? Like, what's the time span? Yeah, there, there's. For, oh no, wait, there, there was. Um, right after, right, right after uh, Bruce was holding that girl. Um, no, 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 because that was a, that was BBS, and then it gave you the time jump. Uh, hold on. So no, Joker says no, no, that no, I'm talking about from, I'm talking about from BVS from Superman's death, right? To Zack right Snyder's now. Justice League. And what, he's going to do the same thing. If you saw the uh, the trailer, which I, I know you did. Yeah, um, of course I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I haven't seen it. Roll what the trailer? trailer? I, I, literally, <laughs> I watch it every morning when I get up. Oh, so I Superman, uh, who you know, I, right I after he gets stabbed by, by Zod. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, he he kind of lunges, you know, lunges back and, and yells. Well, that's a different take, a different shot, a different. Angle. Oh yeah, that's the opening. Uh, so so he's going to do the same thing, and there's probably going to be just like in the beginning of BBS, he kind of does mm -hmm. it like you know, Back to the Future, um, <clears throat> where you know it's going to show you that that death again, and then oh, yeah. it'll probably give us a time from point A to point B. Yeah. When it'll all give us the uh, the BVS card like eighteen months later. But yeah, I actually have a theory that it might be three months on the third day is when they resurrect Superman, something symbolic of Jesus. Cause he was resurrected on the third day. It could be the third month as well. Yeah, yeah. no, he, he, they really, they went a lot harder with the, uh, uh, the Jesus 
analogy or the, yeah. the, the similarities in Man of Steel, and he made they made him scale that back. They were yeah. like, no, dude, this they is were, way too they were, long. They were afraid. They were afraid. Uh, I okay. hope it's Max Liskin. He puts that time card. Three months <laughs> three the, on the third day. Lie to me! <laughs> <laughs> okay, something came through. We know this because of the JL film. Even in the 2017 Justice League, a really bad... <laughs> <laughs> a really bad open to the film an overnight uh, an overweight Ben Affleck overnight yeah overnight it was so over noticeable how overweight he, he was he, he, I think he took an overnighter to get there <laughs> an overweight Ben <laughs> Affleck as Batman is hunting a parademon um, but where did it come from the original idea was Batman investigating uh, kidnappings that leads to the cocoons that we see right here and yes mm -hmm. and that would make more sense because then you see the detective side of Batman not this other yeah. side of Batman where he's just like what do you want from me? Fear. Fear. They can smell it. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and then he lets like, that wow. go. Like you see the guy hopping towards. He's like, so they're here, right? Because Superman died. Well, right? was funny. Was he right. hopped the on the parademon? Yeah, no, he, he hopped on the parademon, went into a circle, and came back to the same fucking building he just left. Yeah, <laughs> it's, like the city. it's like the parademon. Energy. Yeah, that is like. It. That's still the best thing Joss Whedon wrote for that movie, too. That's the sad part. No. <laughs> the only I mean, thing I liked about it is, is when you saw Batman in the reflection of the window. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's I was like, actually, oh, yeah. I mean, that shot, it actually looks really shitty. Like, the, the cutout, like, it, like, the lighting doesn't match whatsoever. Like, it literally looks like there's a flashlight on him. Well, no shit. The light yeah. doesn't match at all throughout. Yeah, the well, lighting. The I'm, I'm just saying that, in general, the lighting is horrible in the reshoots. I did yeah. not like how... You saw him in the reflection, and then he turns around, and then he's like, he gets to grab the hook and he, and he swings. To me, oh, when it he, looks so bad. When he <laughs> turned around, he, when he turned around, he should have been gone. You know what I mean? Like, like hi, he pulls the gun out, and he's not there anymore. Like, yeah, like, yeah. You know what I mean? And the like, fact that, that, that man, not like, oh, I'm a, it's like he, <laughs> he's like, oh shit, shit, a minute ago. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was kind of, I was, <laughs> I was almost going to here I am. You know. Just, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it around. wasn't supposed to be the same Batman from BVS. Took out twenty four guys in two minutes after fighting Superman. It and takes him yeah, really, really three minutes to take out that one thug. Like, doesn't make sense. Yeah, I saw your trailer, AK. I, I think I actually played it on here. It's a really good one too. Um, I know I said that kind of mean. I did. But no, I, I I actually did play it on on uh, one of the shows. So let's continue reading on on the um, light cast thread. Okay, Ryan, this is your chance. Oh, Go. Me. Okay, uh, now uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League is coming, twenty twenty one, but this still ha does not connect to BVS to Zack Snyder's Justice League. Uh, a nice prequel to fill that gap. Uh, and with a vision that has never been seen before, uh, way it is, uh, the, the way, way it was intended, yeah. uh, with uh, David Ayer's Suicide Squad. Again, this is still part of the story and connects the missing dots six. That's a cool poster. Look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, Batman totally killed that guy. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, uh, Batman yeah. doesn't kill. Thank you. Yeah, he, uh, that's, that's <laughs> rule. He, never, he never breaks that one rule. Never. Really? Because yeah, you're gonna break oh, yeah. your one rule. Really? Oh, and, and one then, rule is to not eat yeah. after midnight. Yeah. And, and then here's uh here's Joker <laughs> dropping all of his uh pictures. Look at that. Ooh. Oh yeah, I remember seeing this. This is cool, man. This is really cool. Early concept art for Batman vs Superman. In this scenario, Bruce discovers parademons for the first time. Oh, this is for the, the animated. See the, the, there's Green Lantern over there. Mm. Oh. Interesting. But those are definitely Zach's concepts, though. Those yeah, th those this was a concept right here for. Uh, uh, was Justice he League. riding that uh, that bike from Star Trek? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> what funny, is your cool, name? It's a cool design, but I think Zach actually said the reason he didn't put it in is because it's such an independent asset that he wanted Batman to be more part of the league. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. that's what he said. But I think it looks it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool, but I think it's a, a little too high tech. I, yeah. yeah, I think it's a little too futuristic. Like, yeah, maybe the Flash hooked him up way in advance. Well, I mean, when we're dealing with new gods and lanterns and gods, I mean, I think we could pass that off, maybe. Oh no, 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 he's human. He has no <laughs> way. Yeah. No, if he had met like the the uh, the the people the people from um, 
New Genesis, and they bequeath that sort of technology to him bequeathed. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then, yeah, then it'd be totally cool. Use it, you know, manipulate it, do whatever you want, make mm-hmm. it your own bat hover bike or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But you have to get to that point. Um, okay, I, I, I can't I see him that. just saying, "Hey, I've I've created I've created this new thing, and, and no yeah. one else can have this awesome technology." Okay, it's just about as ridiculous that. as the yeah. Dark Knight Rises floating. Bat- it looked like a lobster. Ship. That thing. Floating <laughs> 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 lobster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come here, floating Catwoman. lobster. <laughs> it looked like it looked like a mixture of a shoebox and a lobster. <laughs> 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 a shoebox and a lobster. It's a hybrid. Uh, <laughs> it's a hybrid, yeah, it sure is. Okay, so right now what we're gonna do is is we're gonna have a little media session here because 43. Been, 43 now. <laughs> so I've been getting a lot of requests and a lot of uh, just stuff sent to me, a, a lot of you know great artwork, and I want to share some of it. And one of them happens to be by a man on this panel, Ryan Rivera, he sent me a trailer that he made just recently, and I want to show it to the world, even though the world's seen it already, but still, I'm going to pretend this like this is the debut. Yeah, this is the yeah. world premiere of Ryan Rivera. Demonetized. Yeah. Demonetized, here <laughs> you I come. <laughs> it's actually my favorite trailer I made. Am I going to get demonetized for this? I can't monetize <laughs> it anyway, so. <laughs> and guys, if you haven't done so yet, I have a Patreon account. You can log in and become a Patreon to the Nicotina Show. It's it's, it's well worth it. Okay, so, um, and then. You don't have a cash app? <laughs> yeah, no, your cash app. You Where's, your get, Where's your OnlyFans? Where's your OnlyFans, Nicotina? You'll get a, a, a bat made by Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm we need you the OnlyFans. That's what we need. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Now here, here is that trailer trailer that I was talking about. Let, let me go in and, and share that with everybody. Um, stop share, share, share audio. I, I don't know why you have to click on that. It should already be turned on. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, here we go. Okay, volume's good. Real. We have to stand together. That was intense. <laughs> the others like me. Why did you say no half the time? Just a feeling. And what was that at the end? Martian Manhunter. Oh, okay. And the statue. Yeah, you saw his eyes. I wanted like a little quick tease. That was cool, man. Thank you. Yeah, I liked it. Now, yeah. I liked it. And now we have another one too. Let's see. Where did I put it? 
So we have another one from AK who actually changed his name on Twitter. So now I have to find it again. Oh, and that, uh, I just want to say, you know, that the dark side voice, that was actually me that did that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. The Because right, I remember yeah. when Snyder commented when he said that in the vision, so, uh, dark side says to Cyborg, my poor broken boy, I can make you whole again. I was like, I need that in the trailer. <laughs> that would be, yeah. I, I, that was really cool, too. I was like, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was yeah. wondering where you got that from. Yeah, it was a lot of fun because you could like mess with the pitch, and I wanted to get it like really guttural. Okay, so here comes the next trailer. This is from AK. He did this one, um, but this is not exactly what we all thought it would be. It's something a little bit different. So this maybe actually be kind of funny. <laughs> Let's check. Oh, oh, oh! Not invited guest. Hold on, wrong button. There we go. <laughs> what? Here we go. Can you guys see that? Uh, it's, a little, yeah, it's kind yeah. of blurry. It is. Uh, it looks oh, a little I think that's okay. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Okay, that's better. What is this? Actually, I don't know if I've seen this already. Oh no! You smell good. <laughs> Do I know you smell one? good. <laughs> it said Justice League. <laughs> we have <decent> Steppenwolf. <laughs> Mankind's melting the polar ice caps, destroying the ecosystem. They got it coming. Hey, I don't mind if you the rice. How about if they boil? This <laughs> <laughs> janitor's wife had some strong That's really good. The aliens, she says, stole her man. Gosh, this is horrible. My Howard is a good man. Yeah. He's a provider. <laughs> And these aliens are gonna f probe him? Oh, cool. You're gorgeous. Fierce <laughs> and strong. And <laughs> he said that you were the thirstiest young woman he ever met. <laughs> oh, God, really? <laughs> Hungry. Uh, what is brunch? Uh, you would see the CGI hour, background in lunch. that. Oh, my God. People are. A little I have slow. a hard time believing the guy who made the Avengers did this. Clark. I hate that shot of Batman. <laughs> yep. <laughs> me too. Why is this so funny? That one too. <laughs> I know. That's my least favorite shot of Batman <laughs> oh, ever, and I like and I'm I've seen Batman oh, and Robin. That's a horrible shot. Oh, it was a really bad composition. <laughs> oh. Cringe awaits. Oh, oh god. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Oh, wow, you can see the facial CGI there too. Oh god, I smell it. Look at the red. <laughs> Glad I didn't miss this. Oh god. Uh, uh, the CGI so hands. Oh, this fucking oh, Russian god. family. Oh god. Oh god. Ouch. That was actually really good. It was, like, yeah. it, was, it was actually really fucking funny. It was good. I liked it. Wow. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. My side is actually hurting because I was laughing so much. It made me want to watch that movie. Too yeah, funny. Right. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, man. Okay, you know, so guys. The part with his lip. Never go fool. And it took the, the noise. Oh, yeah, it's all. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you smell it's good. It's like a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, um, <laughs> so. Speaking of which, all right, you guys. So the, the last topic that that we're, that we're going to talk about is what are your top three scenes from Zach's DCEU movies, not including Justice League because we haven't seen the whole movie yet. So for Man of Steel and BVS, if you had to take three scenes from those two movies combined, not one, not three from each, but just three in total, what would they be? Uh, Philip, you've been kind of quiet lately. Let's start with you. <laughs> Actually, you were talking a lot during the trailer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he's, he's getting tired now. <laughs> I, yeah, I actually got to get up for work in like five hours too. So yeah, there's that. Oh. Yeah. yeah, me too. Fun. fun stuff, right? Yeah, I know. Fun stuff, fun <laughs> stuff. Super I'm fun definitely going to get some coffee. <laughs> I might. I might consider it. Uh, I think for me, the first one that came to mind immediately was um, the conversation of Batman and Lex Luthor at the very end of Batman versus Superman. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's a great one. 
Batman rediscovers his humanity, threatens Luthor, and tells him, you know, you're going to Arkham Asylum, and Luthor says, but the bell's already been rung, and they've heard it. Oh, so you mean this scene right here? That was a remixed version by uh, Krypton Cage, which I absolutely love how he did that. Yeah. It just that oh, it makes it it's so. I can't wait for this movie. Okay, and your, and your next two scenes, gonna, I know you have to go because you got to work in the morning. Yeah. So the next one I chose was <laughs> definitely um, uh, it, the scene, the sequence of Man of Steel when when young Clark and John are they they discover the ship and Clark just kind of looks up at his father and goes, you know, can I just keep pretending I'm your son? And mm -hmm. Pa Kent goes, you are my son. Like that, that is my very favorite, good scene. Favorite sequence in that movie. One of them, I should say, but yeah, definitely my favorite Pa Kent and Clark Kent moment. And then was there a third one? Yeah. The last one <laughs> is, uh... <laughs> sorry. I uh, see how tired I am. I'm, I'm so good. <laughs> <laughs> the last one is definitely uh just just for shits and giggles it's absolutely gonna be uh the 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 sequence in batman versus superman where bruce and clark meet for the first time and and bruce tells him you know some of the effect of maybe it's the gotham city and me maybe it's just some kind of bad history with freaks dressed like clowns yeah that was a very good scene as well oh, well i like i like i like the one with jimmy kimmel too that's a good <laughs> one that was a really <laughs> funny one <laughs> funny jimmy kimmel bits yeah Okay, uh, let's start. Let's go to Ryan Rivera. Ryan, what are your top three? Well, I accidentally picked three BVS scenes by accident because, well, yeah. Um, I would definitely say number one for me is Superman's death. I think it is just extremely impactful, especially the parallels between Zack's favorite film, Excalibur, when he pulls the spear, the spike within him to go deeper and stab Doomsday even further. I think that's really powerful as well. It's tragic, though, at the same time, because you're losing a hero who dealt with so much but still sacrificed himself for the world. And, yeah. I mean, the music is fantastic. I think Henry Cavill's acting in the scene is phenomenal. Like, the sheer pain but also willpower he has to fully commit to killing this last abomination to free his world that he claims and save the love of his life as well. It's just it's amazing. And was that all three of them? No, oh, that was no. just Death of Superman. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got I got a little off topic. I'm sorry. Um, not at all. Not at all. Also, uh, definitely the nightmare sequence. I think it's just it's so aesthetically different and unique. It's visually beautiful at the same time, but also extremely bizarre. Um, especially the setup it was having for especially for Zack Snyder's Justice League and his five film arc as well um is again just very unique uh i love the music as well the music is extremely haunting it sounds like something you would hear out of like dante's inferno like literally the depths of hell like that choir especially when batman comes out of the uh the vault from the bat cave dante's peak yeah yeah <laughs> and uh 
and uh, the warehouse scene because it's the warehouse scene. I mean, the story behind it as well, as well is really great with uh, Martha's connection with Bruce as well. The fact that he kind of has the second chance of redeeming himself of saying of saving the mother he could never have because he felt so powerless. But the fact that he had the power to do so to save someone else's mother, I think that's great as well. Especially the choreography, Richard Citrone as the stuntman for Batman, oh, yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, awesome. Just everything about the fact that they spent like almost two years preparing for that fight alone makes it all the worthwhile. And Zach, he directed the shit out of that and it was phenomenal. Yeah, no, he really did. Um, so the night you said uh, Batman, or Superman dying, the nightmare sequence and the warehouse scene. Yes. And the next Ryan, let's end yeah. it with you. Oh, uh, I like the uh, Cal and Zod fight. Uh, and then I like the sequence at the beginning of BVS that sort of mirrors that and oh, shows you a different perspective. I love Bruce. that scene, Black Zero. It's yeah. so yeah. It's amazing. It, it it they both function. They're both you know different movies. So yeah, uh, I like those two together. And I like there's a, there's just one edit online that kind of puts them together. And I just love watching that. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I just I just want to watch Man of Steel and BVS sort of if if they could just fuse them and make them one movie, kind of like. People would love to see that uh, with the whole Back to the Future trilogy or whatever. But I would just love to see, just have that and just watch that as, as like a complete you know movie. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, of course, like uh, Ryan was saying, the warehouse scene. I love just Batman beating the shit out of everybody. And yeah. uh, it, it, it with the choreography was great. Like I said, Citrone was, was, was fantastic. He was, he was great in the nightmare sequence too. Of course, he, he said that, <laughs> he uh when he was doing that sequence he had like little to no sleep uh yeah. so he well, didn't even remember sequence. yeah i did doing you some of tell. the some of the moves yeah no he yeah, he was he was so it. yeah he was he said he was just so out of it like out of out of you know energy everything but he still you know i mean he and he had issues i forgot i forgot what sort of issues he had uh like he had a medical issues. emergency i think his son or something but yeah he's okay now it was just he got no sleep that night from yeah. uh, that I, know. Event. I, I know it's getting late i know he's like hurry up okay <laughs> so anyway like i was saying about <laughs> r2 <laughs> <laughs> quiet quiet Go ahead, Ryan. Sorry. Oh, no, that was it. That was it. So to round us all out, my favorite scene, and uh, I actually share a favorite scene with uh, one of the a, a great viewer of the show with Rasha. The opening act uh, on Krypton was amazing, and I loved it. Or, and, but Zod's I Will Find Him was fucking fantastic. And yes, I agree. Oh. That is one of my favorite scenes. Um out of both those movies because it's just there's so much going on there there's so much emotion it's so intense i absolutely love it i will find him i mean it's just so powerful you know uh second would be um i, I i'm not even gonna say second I'm, I'm just gonna say the next scene because they're all really good um uh, the nightmare sequence i think is just every time i watch it it just gets better and better and better yeah. and I absolutely love it. Um, I mean, just the way the way it starts off is just so powerful. Just like you were saying, coming out of that door, and you see the world just tore up from dark side. And, I, and as Ryan, as Ryan pointed out, they're driving over the Omega symbols. Yeah. <laughs> how? Because it's so deep. Yeah. Oh, God. How did they do that? Yeah. How's, the kryptonite? How's the light bulbs? They broke it. No, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> God, that soundtrack too is just is oh. it, when you listen to it alone, it freaks you out too. Yeah, like the whole, just, the whole, the whole. Dun, dun, dun. No, because it, it just begins with that yeah. choir, and as yeah, it gets yeah. louder and louder, yeah. it sounds. Imagine if that's Darkseid's theme when he shows up. Oof. It's it's, it's almost would, like it's I'm almost like Wizard of Oz ass. meets fucking I don't know, like yeah. Friday the thirteenth. Yeah, yeah like hell. You can tell <laughs> yeah. You can tell that was straight up junkie XL. It's fire. You can totally tell that was him. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, and 
just like Philip was saying, how it's like, John, John, John. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. yeah. It's just, it's, it, it's, it, it's so badass. But my yeah. favorite scene, even though every scene that we've talked about is my favorite scene, I love all these scenes. But the one scene that stands out, that stands out the most, that just has so much behind it and so much, uh, I, I, God, I just love it, and I, I just want more of it, is this scene right here. You're gonna go to war. That son of a bitch brought the war to us two years ago. Jesus, Alfred, count the dead. Thousands of people. What's next? Millions. He has the power to wipe out the entire human race. And if we believe there's even a 1% chance that he is our enemy, we have to take it as an absolute certainty. And we have to destroy him. But he is not our enemy. Not today. 20 years in Gotham, Alfred. We've seen what promises are worth. How many good guys are left? How many stayed that way? This is so good. It's so good. Perfection. Oh my God. And it was I, funny. I, I would have loved for Bruce to just like when he is not our enemy. And Bruce comes back with like, like my, the, enemy, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, uh, that scene, the dialogue, it just has so much subtext to it. It's so yeah, great. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it was a great exchange. Yeah, great exchange. Yeah, I mean, I remember thinking, I was like, oh my god, I want to see more of this Batman <laughs> so bad. It's even like what Alfred said, uh, it could be a phantasm talking about the white Portuguese, yeah. like, direct reference to Mask of the Phantasm. Like the world that Zach set up with his Batman is so rich, and the fact that we may or may not get his series. Like, it's just, I want his, his universe and his mythology. Definitely. I mean, looking at the way he crafted Batman and then like the, the open endedness of that dialogue, like how water promises are worth, how many good guys are left, how many stayed that way. That could yeah. be a blank. That could be anything. Anything. Yeah, yeah. Any rogue gallery, anything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like, we just need it. We need it good, but just vague enough. Yeah, yeah, just big enough so you're like, <laughs> I want more. Yeah. And are you are you guys good with him being having Dick Grayson being the dead Robin? Or are you, or are oh, you like, here on. Oh, oh, we can't bring this up. <laughs> Ryan takes this very personally. I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I, I love I, Dick I Grayson. Ask, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. I, I love. Not cool. Not cool. <laughs> but I'm I, sorry. I, did... I just wanted to ask. <laughs> no, no, no. It's all good. It's all good. I, when I first heard about that, it did like it hit me here. But that's what it's supposed to do, actually. You know. Come after me! I'm a man! I'm 40! <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> I'm down. Get ready! I'm 40! Um, but no, no, I mean, that's... I mean, Jason holds no weight for, a, for, for your general audience. You know, for comic book fans, we know that, you know, Jason yeah, got, exactly. you know, got killed. But for non-comic book fans, they know Burt Ward. They know... Uh, you know, the Robin from Super Friends, they know Robin <laughs> from you know, they yeah, know Robin from yeah, the Batman nice. and Robin animated yeah, you know, television show. Come on, Gavin. Um, they, they know freaking what's his name? Uh, uh what's the Chris, Chris O'Donnell, O'Donnell. Yeah. right? So that's who they're familiar with, Dick Grayson. So for Dick Grayson to be the one that's dead holds more weight, holds more gravity, and and kind of shows you why or what happened with with uh, uh, with uh, with Bruce. Uh, my my hope is that the flash goes back tries to fix the thing with his mother but also like tries to do something that like sort of mm-hmm. shifts who the joker kills to where mm-hmm. grayson is alive that helps bruce's psyche he he's he has a different perspective now mm-hmm. uh, but jason dies as a butterfly effect okay. so that would be an interesting way oh, of oh i see of, what you mean like he saves him but that ends up killing jason, jason todd and, because yes. it sets yeah. that into motion Yes, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. I just think it works best with Affleck's Batman. I think it, like the connective tissue, I thought was really interesting. The fact that he had his first Robin, like his first quote unquote, like adoptive son, like someone he took under his wing to be the first one to die. I just, yeah. me personally, I think it holds a lot of weight, especially thinking about the way that the Joker did kill him in the DCU. I mean, we see the, the, the suit is stabbed it's also burnt it looks like got shot as well so like he completely obliterated i mean this child you know because i'm pretty sure there was that still shot of grayson's tombstone Mm -hmm. and he was only 18 17 years old when he died 
Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, because it said he was born in 19, I think it said 1982 to 2000. So it was like early on in Batman's career that Grayson was murdered, probably, you know? I think the death the death date on Bruce's parents' tomb, I think, was 81. Yeah, it was 81. Mm -hmm. So Dick being born in 82, he, that, makes, that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, well. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, and it looks like Naman shares your same uh, sympathies for uh, Dick Grayson, Ryan. It says, Grayson uh, being dead, hit, uh, being the dead Robin, hit me hard because for the longest time, or uh, because Nightwing was one of my faves, and I've yeah. wanted Nightwing plus Batfleck movie forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have loved to have seen, you know, Snyder's interpretation of uh, the character of Grayson, you know, Nightwing, mm -hmm. yeah. all that, you know, and, and to find out, again, you know, to find out that that, wasn't the case and Zach's story arc closes, you know, I was like, well, where does that leave, you know, any wiggle room for, for Dick? Uh, so the only way that, okay. For Sorry. Richard, Thank uh, you. there you go. That's you say wiggle room for Dick. It just, you know. <laughs> hey, children, this is a late children, screen please. guys. Um, yeah. but anyway, you know, for him to close it off, you know, and if they have movies beyond, you know, uh, the Zack Snyder's, you know, Justice League part one, part two, part three, whatever. Uh, it, and it would be another Elseworlds. And, and mm -hmm. I was like, man, I'd really like to see his interpretation of the character or mm -hmm. at least, you know, with him as a producer on the, on the, uh, on the property or whatever. And, and they did, you know, they were talking about having a Nightwing movie, but that was under a different regime. Yeah. Um, and he had to reiterate after that regime was taken out yeah. that no, it's not Jason because they, they, what they did in suicide squad was they, they, I think they changed it to where it was Jason. Um, they did, yeah. And then, so Zach had to kind of reiterate and change it back. Yeah. Wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> wiggle, 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 wiggle. Yeah. And wiggle, McLovin, wiggle. I agree. Ben Irons, uh, Ben Affleck and Jeremy Irons' interactions in BBS are mm -hmm. fantastic. They're my favorite. Uh, Bruce and Alfred dynamic. Although I, I did think that uh, Christian Bale and. Um, Michael Caine. Michael Caine's interactions. I thought they, I thought the, they had really good interactions when, when he oh, wasn't doing really the voice, right. when he was just talking <laughs> to him normally. Yeah. You know, yeah. But the thing was, Alfred, he, he was always, he was always, he always had a speech prepared for Bruce. It's like, if you do this, this is gonna happen. And it's like, okay, guy, are you with me or are you not? You know? It's yeah. Because like, I, because Jeremy yeah. Hansel, he, he was like, you know, I'm, I, I have to be in this or else I get fired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to turn around, Master Wayne, as you tr as you throw away your life. I'm going, I'm yeah, going on a holiday. The fact that Jeremy Irons off, he just shit talks to him all the time. Oh, he just like, shit talks to him all the whole time. <laughs> yes, it, yeah. it's great because I wonder if it takes me a Buckingham Palace. Yeah, you know, it, it just it feels more real between yeah. their, with their conversations. Like which one? Which one? Uh, with Jeremy Irons and and oh, uh, Ben yeah. Affleck. You yeah. know, it's it's they're trying to reason, or he's trying to reason with him. Like, dude, you know. You got it wrong. You're an idiot. And he's like, no, I'm not. And this is why. Yeah. And, and you know, get back to your station. Yeah. <laughs> or, like, there's actually that really good scene that they cut from the Ultimate Edition where Alfred's chopping wood. And then he comes in the house and he sees the Capitol bombing. And he just knows instinctually yeah, he knows. that it's going to drive Bruce off the fucking deep end. And the way he looks down at the papers, too. And then he looks out into the lake like the view and everything you can just look in, in his acting he's just like shit's gonna yeah, go down and he's just like oh no what what is he gonna do now like you know he's yeah. just like and then the green lantern gone? comes and tells him something yeah, yeah. you did see green reflection <laughs> from his glasses you actually did <laughs> yeah tomar ray and uh what's Kill the other guy kilowog kilowog Kill michael Wog. clark duncan yeah. <laughs> rest, rest, in peace. Rest, in peace. Yeah, rest, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. He actually would have, yeah, if they could have brought. Uh, he was. That. He has a great. He had a great voice. He did. He did. He did. He did. He did. Oh, what's up, Tony from Vancouver? What's up, man? Omar Ray was actually pretty good in the Green Lantern film as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what? What is his name? The guy from Pirates. Uh, he he was he. Fuck. I can't yeah, remember. It, it's uh yeah he's in the pianist. Did you just say pianist? No, P okay. The we're, pianist. We're the pianist. I say pianist. <laughs> okay, so guys, 
we're going to start wrapping this up now because we're at an hour and a half. Everyone's it's getting late for everybody here, except for me. And so I know you guys are getting tired. I appreciate you guys sticking around. Well, actually it's the same time for me as it is for, for, for Philip, but he has to work in the morning. So that does make a difference. Um, now we'll see what happens. And I do like uh, uh, Ryan's uh, th- uh, fan theory, not theory, um, idea, I should say, that if he were to go back and save um, Dick Grayson, that that would lead to the death of uh, Jason. Jason Todd. I think that's a really good consequence for that kind of for saving him. Um, and last night, I, I, I also patent talked pending. about this. What's that? Go ahead. Patent pending. Patent pending. <laughs> Because I also theory. talked about uh, about the Flash movie last night with TJ, and I was saying I had an idea of like, what if, right? What if the Flash movie starts out? It starts off in the nightmare sequence because we're going to see more of that. So what if it starts off there, and it, it starts off with them being attacked? You know, like when Batman gets captured, and while that's happening up above, that's when they are down below getting ready to send him on the uh, cosmic treadmill, and then. Huh. And, and then you, you know, so I, I imagine if he's down there and, and they're making their final, you know, calculations on it, and there's bombs going off, the whole the whole place is shaking, the lights are flickering, you know, and uh, and cyborg's and gets, there. What's that? And cyborg's there. And cyborg is there, and he's telling me he's like, "Now you sure this is it? Yeah, based on my calculations, this is where you mm-hmm. should go. You know, this is our best chance." And mm-hmm. then, I mean, hell, you might even see. Uh, I think it'd be cool if, if you know, if you see the Joker there, you see Deathstroke, yeah. maybe, you know, uh, the, the door busts open and a bunch of troops come in and Deathstroke has to pull his swords and start yeah. killing people left and right. Mm-hmm. And I mean, imagine if now, now I, I'm going to, I'm going to get really carried away here. So, so get ready. Okay. So right. now, now imagine if that's all happening. Right. Mm-hmm. And you know, uh, you know, the Joker is there and you know, Deathstroke is there and Deathstroke tells him, you know, you burn out, screw this up. We're counting on you. And he's like, yeah. He goes, he goes, yeah. Destro would say well, you were counting on you? Well, because he has to go back and change the past. That just doesn't sound like a Destro line. Okay, whatever. We're okay, counting on you, Flash. No, but like, you know. It'd be, like, more, like, it'd be, better, if, it'd be better if he said, don't fuck this up. The one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the okay, Zack so, Snyder film. Like he, he holds, you're he thinking, puts his hand you're, on you're thinking shoulder, Joss Whedon, bro. Just, don't fuck this up. I'm not thinking know? Joss Whedon. Don't ever say that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. there we oh, go now, now i'm center good. stage now okay so basically he, he tells him don't fuck this up yeah. and then as he says that the door you know so he's telling the guy don't fuck this up he's like all right <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the lie okay. <laughs> don't be funny <laughs> <laughs> very sarcastically turns away and just goes <laughs> and then imagine <laughs> he's like and then imagine like Deathstroke taking on a bunch of soldiers, killing them left and right with his swords. And at the same time, you have um, Victor sure. saying, run, Barry, run! Because here comes Superman, comes flying into the Batcave, and, and that's when he goes. Hmm. That's that's when he takes off, and he goes to the Cosmic Treadmill. And where does he go? He goes to the Batcave scene from BBS to tell hmm. Bruce, and he realizes that he's too soon. And now it gives that more context, because you're like, oh, this is where he came from. And then when he comes out of it, he's then shot out into a alternate reality where it's kind of like flashpoint. And he meets in that, you know, in this reality, he meets Thomas Wayne. Who's who's Batman in this world. And maybe Thomas Wayne is the one who helps develop the suit, the new suit for the flash. Hmm. Interesting. And then he helps him, travel one more time but, but since the flash is still new at this he does it one more time he travels but he ends up in keaton's universe and then he has to figure out how to get back to where he needs to be at and that's how they introduce the whole keaton's batman and all that mm-hmm. now that that's interesting but i feel like that sounds more of something that zach would do probably in like jl two or three as that kind of connected to that that's well, just me personally Right, but it's a way of of, of, of expanding the multiverse, is showing that, that there's alternate mm-hmm. realities happening at once, yeah. and the film could go back and forth between the uh, you know the Flash being stuck in, now in Keaton's reality, and also going back you know kind of going back mm-hmm. and forth to uh, the alternate reality where Deathstroke 
or I mean, with uh, um, Thomas Wayne and the Atlanteans and the Amazonians fighting each other, and mm -hmm. and kind of like a race against time, where he has to try and fix things before you know before you know they meet their doom because he can change everything. Yeah. So it's just an idea. I think yeah. it's pretty cool. I kind of think Andy Muschietti. I feel like he would tamper into the nightmare timeline with Zach and everything, but I just I feel like he would kind of centralize Flash a little more. That's that's just me personally, though. Right. Mm. Yeah, I don't disagree. What? I know. Mm. I I went for it. I went for it. <laughs> so, Roger, mm. How many tabs do you have open right now? Quite a few. Mm. Um, you guys ever think what Lex Luthor, is, where he is in the Nightmare World, if he's with them or if he's dead or if he's a servant to Darkseid? I mean, he probably was the one who allegedly was going to give Batman the kryptonite, maybe. Yeah, and I could see I could see Luther calling. He calls Darkseid and he thinks, oh, you know, I can rule with this man. He's like, no, you're going to die. And then he kills him. And it's like, oh, I fucked up. <laughs> like, I brought I brought the end of humanity, but I'm not going to be able to sit through it. You know, here's your good line right here. You better not fuck it up. <laughs> yeah. Quote it by me. There, there it is. Slade. Yeah. Actually, um, AK had a really good point that I had never seen before. I, I never thought of before. Let me see if I can find it right here. When he's Batflex says, "How many good guys are left?" and later on, Superman says, "No one stays good in this world." Remember he, how, he, how he tells him that? Yeah, yeah. I, I never, I never made that that kind of connection to that. I was like, "Oh yeah, he's mm, right." Yeah. That, that's, a, that's actually a really good Superman scene. Yeah, yeah. No one stays good forever in this world. Yeah, he's so conflicted. Like he's like, "What do I do?" Because he tries so hard to be good in the world, but it's like sometimes you got to make really, really tough decisions. Yeah, sure. yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, guys, thank you so much for being here. I know it's getting late, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. I want to thank uh, Philip from uh, Superhero Stress Podcast, Ryan from the Real Burn Productions, and Ryan from Zebra Fett. And uh, Philip, where can they find your podcast? If anyone wants to check out my podcast, you can check it out on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, or even Google Podcasts. Just search Superhero Stress. And uh, Ryan Rivera. You can find me at The Real Burn Productions. That's my YouTube channel. You can also find me on Twitter at The Real Burn. And you can follow me on my Instagram, The Real Burn Productions. <laughs> and Ryan, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on YouTube. Uh, I have a channel. It's called Zebra Fets. Uh, you can also find me uh, on the Four Nerd Show uh, on Thursdays, 730 Eastern. Uh, and so, yeah. Or nice. Twitter. You can find me on Twitter. And, and, and don't subscribe. Is your, is your <laughs> and don't subscribe in nerdy many ways. He has too many subs. He really does. Yeah, he's approaching 10K. So Almost 10K. He's killing it, man. He's killing it. You. Uh, great stream uh, to see you guys. Yeah, thank you, Gavin, for being here. And thank you for everyone in the chat. Um, oh, man, do another streaming. I will. And in fact, I will be back tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, because that's the time that counts, 1 p.m. Central time. That's for you, Ryan. Yeah. Um, with the Nicotina <laughs> Show. And I'm going to have some really cool guests on. There are two studs by the name of, where is it? Film Gob. And Arasha, <laughs> Film Gob and Subjective Reviews, that's Tyler from Subjective Reviews, will be on the show uh, tomorrow morning. And we're going to talk about probably some of the same stuff, but a little bit more stuff as well. And yes, that is Best Take Ryan. <laughs> yeah, what's up? <laughs> so guys, tune in tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central. Uh, for the Nicotina show and ACS universe will not be available because he has to work. So we'll see if another guest host rises from the shadows, but we'll see. <laughs> it won't be, it won't be this guy. Cause he'll be at work. <laughs> I'll be working somehow, some way best take Ryan will be working. Yep. And so everyone in the chat, Akbar, Rasha, AK, DC extended, Gavin Cooley, Naman, uh, Joker, Bat Dan, Katsuka, Intruder, El Capa de Siam. Did I forget anybody else? Koopy Malik. Thank you guys for being here. Vikram, thank you for being here, guys. And of course, Andrew Gasali, who's always here. Thank you so much. I enjoyed having all you guys here. This was fun. Guys, we'll do it again sometime. Definitely. Yeah. Totally. I'll come back on your show. Oh, thanks, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay, and, and until tomorrow, guys. Uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for for stopping by.